so you've been talking about lawfare. And, you know, I was I was thinking about how, oh, let's say back even just eight to ten years ago, uh, the Democrats used lawfare for their sort of social engineering objectives and goals, right? Uh, they were mm-hmm. trying, they would use, they couldn't get it through legislation, so they would go through the courts. I don't think any of us at the time expected that they would actually take it this far to now use lawfare to persecute, I'm not even going to say prosecute, persecute political yeah. opponents. It is stunning, and it is a thing, I mean, we've heard it over and over again, but it's true. It's the stuff of a banana republic. And, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they focus on, well, this is just about this person. We all know that it's not just about this person. Once you get started down this road, it's really hard to pull back. So now we, we were talking about with the, the criminal prosecution right now that's going going on in New York. But at the, <laughs> the same day that Trump is sitting in that court, the Supreme Court is deciding another issue. And that issue is the issue of presidential immunity and how far that extends for official acts done by uh, a president while he or she is in office. And it's been it's a case that uh, Jack Smith has has brought against the president trying to drum up uh, some kind of charges against him over the whole J6 affair. It's completely ridiculous. And it's um, I think really undermining the office of the presidency at a uh, great cost and peril to the American people. So wanted to ask you a little bit uh, about your thoughts on that. How do you think the Supreme Court will will rule on that particular issue? Yeah, and, and, and Nikki, it, it truly is. And Jack Smith, once again, is trying to rush this as fast as he can um, because he wants it, you know, I've not, have you ever seen prosecutors rush a case? <laughs> you know, that's the defense attorney's right to, you know, to have enough time. And so once again, um, Jack Smith's at it again. But yeah, I think President Trump's attorneys did such a, a great job. And, and ultimately, I, th- I think they're going to rule probably um, late June, July, the Supreme Court. And there are three options. They can say complete immunity case dismissed. Probably not the most likely thing, given the questions they asked. They could say there's no immunity and say start trial tomorrow. Probably not going to happen. I think most likely what's going to happen is they are going to rule that there is immunity, um, but it's going to be remanded back to the appellate court, back to the trial court to make the determinations on what acts are immune and what acts are not immune, um, what acts were in his personal capacity. And, you know, so under there's a case called um, Nixon v. Fitzgerald, and that established civil immunity for all presidents. And the inference is criminal immunity also applies. And I think all the justices' questions were right in line with that. You know, if, if, if we don't have criminal immunity for presidents while they're in office, I'm telling you, they're just gonna become a figurehead. They won't be able to do anything. Every former president will be prosecuted by a political opponent, period. The one that should be the most worried about this is Joe Biden. Seriously, it, it, I mean, Harry Truman would have been prosecuted back in the day um you know if, if you dropped a bomb the bomb that was dropped on hiroshima prosecuted right. abe lincoln probably would have been prosecuted yep. every single every single president would be subject to prosecution so i and the supreme court asked very thoughtful questions that, that all the justices did so that's my best guess of course we don't know how they're going to roll but that's my best guess and, and once it gets if it gets remanded back Um, to the lower courts, it will take months and months and months of just briefing on all of these issues, and then it will be post-election, and they won't care anymore. (laughs) Right. Jack Smith's whole strategy just falls apart in that regard. So that's great. That that right there is a victory, too, for for President Trump. Uh, And speaking of whom, you know, a lot of people wonder, why is it people on the other side of the aisle, even some Republicans, why why are people so um, loyal to President Trump? Why are they so passionate about supporting him? And for those of us who've had uh, some level of personal interaction with him, uh, and I mean, I haven't had the kind of interaction that you and Kelly have had, but just the, the short yeah. interactions I've had with him, just a wonderful man um, who loves our country and is sincere and genuine in his passion to make America great. And so um, I was wondering if you could just talk to our audience a little bit. You've had, you've had a lot of interaction with him. You've been with him for uh, a while, supporting him, advocating for him. Uh, 
through these these various crises. Why do you uh, why do you stick with President Trump? Why have you stuck with him throughout all of this? Well, I care about him like 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 I do a family member. I mean, I've known him before he was president, before he thought he'd run for president. I adore Melania. I was just at her mom's funeral recently, and and you know, I, I get to see the, the the real President Trump, not not the celebrity. I got to see a husband supporting his wife, his grieving wife who had just lost her mother. That's the man that that I know. He's a great father. His kids are all friends of mine. Um, you, you know, and. and uh, to tell you just like a, a personal story about the man that I know, Nikki um, was one day and it was when the world was about to shut down and, and he was in the White House and he was still up in the residence because he had been making calls all night long to world leaders. And I never tell personal stories about him, really, but this one just is so important to me. And, um, and his assistant at the time was down in the Oval Office and it was early in the morning. So I called her instead of calling him because I, I don't like to call him early in the morning. And um, an organization that's like Make-A-Wish, it's called Dreams Come True in Florida, they had reached out to me. They tracked me down because they knew how close I was to, to the president. And they said, we have this little boy and he's dying of leukemia. And they said, all he wants, I get chills, all he wants is to get to talk to the president. We don't know how long he's got. Can you help us? And um, he had leukemia. He, Jake was like, 10 or 12 and of course his head was you know bald from the, the chemo and he had little friends with him and they sent me all these pictures of him so i sent them to the president's assistant all these pictures and i said listen this little boy isn't going to make it long his dad is former military his mom's a nurse and when he was in the hospital getting his treatments he covered he was covered in the american flag as his blanket all the nurses gave him mm -hmm. and he had on his maga socks and he was just adorable and he just loved the president. And that was his the only wish that they hadn't been able to make true come true for this little boy. And they said, listen, he does not have long. It's really bad. So I said, okay, let me see what I can do. So I called the White House and his assistant went up to the residence and said, president, the, the, the picture she didn't have there, they were on her computer. She went up and she told the president's story. I, I just told you this little boy is about to die. All he wants to do is talk to you. So he calls me. Pam, what's the number? What's the number? What's the number? We've got to talk to him. He writes the number down. He writes the number down himself. This is our world leader when everything is going on in the world. This was, and so he says, okay, I'll call. Let me call him. Hangs up, makes a call. Couldn't get through. Calls me back. Pam, they're not answering. I don't know. I don't know. So I call the little boy's sister and they weren't answering because they were baptizing him at the time oh. in the family pool because he was about to die. So, um, so they, um, so I said, President, they were baptizing Jake. So he goes, okay, let me try again. So he calls back. He gets him on the phone. And all this was captured, the phone call on video, because they had a videographer there baptizing Jake. So that's how I know the details of the phone call. And uh, I'll never reveal that. It'll never be public. But it was one of the most beautiful phone calls I've ever heard between a man and a dying little boy who looked up to this man. And it was like a father figure talking to this little boy and talking to his parents. And it was just so beautiful and so kind. And, um, and so call ended and, and, and the president called me back and said, thank you. I got to talk to him. Pam, let me know next week. How's he doing? Let me know how he's doing. Okay. I want to send him some stuff. So then the president, um, we hang up, he comes down, he's in the oval office and I call it a swag room. They have a room outside the oval office, with all this stuff like stuffed animals and, all presidents have it like really cool stuff for kids who come to visit and people and so his assistant told me he said get me a box and he went in there with a big box all this is the president this is this is the man that i love went over the big box and started filling it with stuffed animals mm -hmm. and stuff swag and he saw the picture up on his assistant's screen of the little boy with a bald head in a golf cart with another child with a bald head you know because they were going through chemo he saw it and he said, print that picture. And she printed it and he wrote on there, um, I still have that picture of, I still have a copy of that picture. Dear Jake, please look over all of us in heaven. Love mm. Donald Trump. He mm. framed it, he packed up the box, they overnighted it to the family, but I had a screenshot of the, the picture. So I got to call the family. I sent the family the screenshot of the picture. So Jake saw the picture and then they overnighted all, all the, the, the things. And then the next day, um, they call back, Pam, did Jake get everything? And I said, no, sir, um, he died early this morning. 
but he got to see the picture that, that you signed for him. And now the family, they have all of that. And they ask if, if they could go public with the video. And, you know, and I said, no, it was, a, and, and they agreed. It, it was a, a private time between a man and a little boy. So that's the man that I know. And people could tell you a hundred stories like that, of things that he does for kids and families. And that's why the people that truly know him, Kelly knows him, people that know him, you know, you love him. He's a, he's a good man. What what you see on TV is the showman. 